Hello, everybody, and welcome to the IDP Guys podcast. Today, we are going to discuss IDP rankings. I'm joined by my co-host, Jamie Pierogue. Now, don't call him Pierogi because he gets a little upset. How you doing, Jamie? Uh, pretty good. Yeah, I'll slap you with a potato if you uh, call me Pierogi. <laughs> and now for the pressing issues. Do you prefer a cheese pierogi or potato pierogi? Because that's why you're here tonight, talk about pierogies. Everything in life is better with cheese. Got to have the cheese in the program. <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, Jamie is the co-host of the Cheat Sheet on the Going for Two podcast. He also does the Sunday Start Sit show. Um, I was on last week. There was a little rumor that you were going to sell your house if the if the 49ers were to lose to the Browns, I understand. Yeah, no, no one expected the Browns to win that game. I said I would bet my house on it. So I'm homeless now. <laughs> I see you uh, sitting on a nice couch with a Browns blanket, so I'm just kind of picking. Um, as we normally do, we're going to discuss the DL rankings first, then we're going to go to the DB rankings, and then lastly, we're going to do the linebacker rankings. Uh, along the way, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the IDP's biggest questions. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple injuries. We're going to talk about depth charts. We're going to talk about players that I find uh, interesting this week, see how the players fit in the team scheme, okay? All right, let's go ahead and begin. Um, well, actually, before we begin, let me just show you guys how we are basing our rankings. Um, as you guys know from the last episode, my name is Steve Hungarter. I am on Twitter at IDP Hunter. Um, I am a writer for the Fantasy Six Pack. I am also a writer for IDP Guys as well as I do this podcast. And I'm also an ECR amateur ranker at Fantasy Pros. Okay, one thing you guys need to know about Fantasy Pros is they actually have a ranking system that they use. Let me go ahead and just share this screen with you guys. All right, so the scoring system that they use Solo tackles 1.5, assisted tackles 0.75, tackles for a loss 2, sacks 4, interceptions 5, and so forth and so forth. Okay, so that's going to be the rankings we use. I know when we talk IDP, it gets a little controversial because we're trying to get to what rankings work best for our leagues. Okay, uh, let me show you, without further ado, my defensive lineman rankings. Uh, can you see that screen there, Jamie? Yeah, perfectly. Okay, excellent. Okay, so when we're looking at defensive defensive linemen, I got to say the holy trinity on this list right here is always going to be Crosby, Watt, and Bosa. It's always going to be Crosby, Watt, and Bosa. I almost put Watt ahead of Crosby this week. But I really like both of them and their matchups. But here's why I put Crosby ahead of Bosa, okay? Crosby is second in, in tackles with 19 at his position. Uh, one thing we do over here, Jamie, is I like to rank by position, like the numbers. It just makes better sense. If I said a guy was had 47 tackles at the position, you'd be like, okay, that's good. But if he's a cornerback doing it, then he'd be number one at his position, so that would look impressive. So that's why I kind of say it the way I do. But yeah, Crosby has, he's first in assist with four, but he's got the Bears this week. And he's a killer, he's a killer at the sack, right? The Bears give up the fourth worst at that position um, to the defensive end. So he's just got a better matchup than Watt. Watt is still a good player. Watt is ranked, he's tied for first with sacks with eight. He's tied for first with one forced fumble. He's playing the Rams. The Rams have been better than most people think. The Rams are actually, their offensive line, they're middle of the pack. They're 13th at the position. They're not the worst. They're not the best either. But both of these guys are going to eat this week. So you can have them. You're going to see them in rankings as one and two. I don't think it really matters much. And, of course, you know you got Bosa, you got Garrett in my tier one. If you got those guys, you start them. Smoke them if you got them. There's nothing wrong with either one of those four players. Uh, any rebuttals on that, Jamie? 
Uh, yeah, no, I can see why you have Crosby at number one, especially with the backup quarterback playing with fields out. Mm -hmm. uh, they're probably going to get more sacks, more pressures. So I, I like it. I like them at one. Okay. Um, the, uh, the other thing I didn't really mention was Miles Garrett. I got him at four. A lot of people think that's fair. A lot of people think it's a little outrageous. Miles Garrett, he's actually going against – he's got the – seven. He's he's actually going against a pretty decent offensive line. So, you know, we're banking on talent with that one, okay? Um, so I don't see a problem with either one of those being in my four. Now, here's where my list gets a little interesting. Gets a little bit more spicy, if you will. I got Daniel Hunter at five, okay? Daniel Hunter is playing the 49ers. Believe it or not – Daniel Hunter playing his 49ers is a pretty good matchup. A lot of people don't realize that, but the 49ers are giving up surprisingly the fifth best points at the defensive end position. And we already know Hunter is 17th in tackles. That's tied for fifth. He's actually, he actually got eight sacks on the season. He's tied for first with sacks and he's got one on the one forced fumble this season. So he's tied for ninth. So to put it all together, Hunter has a really sweet matchup this week, and he's going against the team that gives up the gives up the plays. I almost put him in the tier one category, but it's hard to gamble against Crosby, Watt, Bosa, Garrett. So I think Hunter at five is reasonable. Thoughts, Jamie? Uh, yeah, it looks like a good matchup. I mean, Purdy didn't look good against the Browns, so I think Hunter will probably eat all day. I like it. <clears throat> okay, the rest of this tier I can kind of uh, – I can kind of make sense with when you see uh, Aiden Hutchinson here, Aiden Hutchinson, he's playing. Um, he's playing. Uh, let's see. Well, actually he got 10 tackles in the season. He's got one assist. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter to him. If you got him in your lineup, you're banking on them sacks. He's got four on the season. That's tied for 17th. He's got one forced fumble tied for ninth. He'll make moves. You'll see him in people's rankings. He moves up and down the rankings. Um, Kind of his matchup this week is middle of the pack. You know, they're they're um, the Baltimore Ravens. They're ranked fifteenth with passing uh, the pat the the against the pass rush. But you know, you you always you always can bank on Lamar Jackson running around with the ball. You can always bank on some miscues, whatever. Guys like Aiden Hutchinson, they're going to get their plays. But that's why I have him at six. Uh, moving on, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. I got Josh Allen at seven. Now, Jamie, most people have Josh Allen a little lower this week, not me. I'm kind of excited by this matchup. Let me tell you, Thursday night football, he's going up against the Saints. The Saints have a tackle. The guy's name is James Hurst, okay? So James Hurst is injured. He went out last week. He had an ankle injury. As of the time of this recording, he's still hurt. So if he's out, you look at the depth chart, there's a guy that comes in. His name is Trevor Penning. Trevor Penning is horrible, horrible. PFF has him ranked worse. I challenge you when you get a minute, go ahead and look up, pull up Trevor, Trevor Penning's stats. Uh, if Josh Allen gets a hold of Trevor Penning this week, he's going to have an incredible matchup and incredible chance to beat this guy. Uh, any thoughts there, Jamie? Uh, yeah, I actually didn't know who this guy was. I'm looking him up now. He uh, allows... The, he's tied for the fifth most sacks allowed in the league. And he's got tied for the fourth most penalties in the league. And he's only a part-time player. Another thing, they're playing on Thursday night. So I look at Thursday night's games being more defensive anyway. So I, I, I yeah, don't blame you for having them that high. Yeah, uh, good point. And again, you know, check your rankings, check your, check your injury report. But yeah, um, Trevor Penning, like you just said, He's a backup, and I didn't know he was ranked that high, but he gives it up. He gives it up on penalties, too, if memory serves. He gives up penalties. And he's fourth. also – Yep. Okay, he's fourth in penalties, and he's also fourth against uh, – uh, against, What against was the other category? Uh, fifth for sacks allowed. Okay, fifth for sacks allowed. See? So he's a – he's a bat. It's a it's matchup proof for Josh mm -hmm. Allen this week. I would almost be tempted to move him up. But look, look what we got, though. I mean, shoot, how do you uh, – we got the we got the Holy Trinity up here with Crosby, Watt, Bosa. We got Garrett. I just talked my ear off about Daniel Hunter. 
Hutchinson's Hutchinson, and I got Josh Allen. It's kind of hard to move him any further up, but I'm more than okay with either one of those guys. I really anything. Am. I would just say one spot, move him to six. But any you move him ahead of Hutch. That, uh, but I mean that's a coin flip too. So uh, yeah, I, I, like the I hate it. to keep moving Hutch down, and he has a big week. That's my issue with that mm-hmm. one. But I'm more than okay with these guys. You know what else too? I'm more than okay with the next one. Number eight on this list is Montez Sweat. I'm more than okay bringing him back. Now, I know what people are probably thinking. Last week, he had a great matchup. He put up a dud week. He really did. He broke my heart a little bit. He's got pretty good stats this year, um, and he's going against the second best uh, favorable matchup for him for defensive end. Um, let me look at. Let me pull up some of his stats. He He's sixth. He's got six sacks, so he's tied for seventh. He's got two forced fumbles. He's tied for first. He actually got 32 tackles, so he's in the top 10, okay? So apply those stats to a weak matchup. Look at his playing time. And, you know, here's something else I wanted to show you guys. We're going to go look at the uh, snap tool real quick, okay? Um, Guys, see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, IDP, guys, has this great feature. It's called the snap snap, snap tool app. What you do is you go down and you click the player on the snap tool. And what you can do is go to all the different teams. Um, it's a very good a good factor when you are looking at numbers. Now, Jamie, question for you. Do you happen to know, for a defensive lineman, Jamie, do you happen to know what a good benchmark is for a defensive lineman and his snaps? Uh, just off the top of my head, I'm guessing 80. 80 you watched 90. the podcast last week, didn't you? <laughs> So the correct answer actually is anywhere between 60% to 80. I'm going to say anywhere between 50% is a decent pass rusher. Okay. It's pretty standard, pretty normal. Starters on the DL generally play somewhere between 55, 85%. So that was a good answer. Okay. Rarely will you see a defensive lineman ever play more than that. So if you get a guy at 60%, that's a pretty good week. Okay. Linebackers and DBs, they usually want they usually have you start around 90%. I'm just saying, but anything over 50% is a decent stat line. And the reason I bring this up, when you look at Montez Sweat, and I went over this last week, week one, 82%. Week two, 73%. Week three, 72%. Week four, 82%. Week five, 75% was a beast. Look at last week. For whatever reason, they cut his snaps in half. I was thinking he was double teamed all game, but no, he only got his 40% what he normally gets. That's all he got. So uh, maybe, maybe just maybe there's something we didn't know last week. Chalk it up as an anomaly, you know, chalk it up. That's not his normal week, you know? So I'm all in again. I'm all in on a lot of these commanders, but I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with, um, with Montez Sweat, I'm going to put him in the top eight. I'm more than okay with all the players we just described. But I do want to show you guys the snap count tool because that's the kind of stuff I look at. I look at snap count tools. I look at win-loss percentages. I look at the matchup. And that usually determines, especially when I'm close on players, how I'm putting them. My heart is broken on Montez Sweat from last week playing against the easy match with Falcons. But look at it as a rest day. He's back in it. All we can do is start our studs, you know. But, uh, Jamie, any questions on snap count? Uh, no, I think we're good to go. Move on. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of times people ask me, like, where does that number come from? You know, like that magic number. And, uh, you know, I didn't just make it up. I guess somebody smarter than me somewhere put all these players in an Excel sheet. They put them all in a sheet, and they looked at the top players, and they realized guys around the 65 85% mark and higher, those are usually your – your full down players, those are ones that are usually getting the most plays. Make sense? Yeah, I, I would actually think the defensive yeah. linemen play like 80 to 90 percent. No, well, it's kind of impossible. 80. Good question, though. It's kind of impossible when you look at how tough the NFL is. It's too rough of a position. Those guys are getting smashed, banged up in there. Uh, I mean, the, the people like Nick Crosby are few and far between, the TJ Watts, you know. But yeah, you, you won't you won't see that very often out of a defensive lineman. And even even taking away the tough the toughness of it, when you look at different coverages and you're putting as many safeties on the field on third and long and stuff like that, 
you're going to take those guys out. So they're always going to have a lesser snap count. I don't worry about that too much, Jamie. If it's less than 50, I'm a little concerned because it's kind of hard. You're gambling. Will this guy be on the field or not? If you're starting a guy that's less than that, I'm worried because now you're banking on a big play. Yeah. So those are the guys that are normally on the waiver wires that you're trying to pick up, like the 40, 45% people. Normally, yeah. yeah. Like Drake Jackson had a big week for the Niners, and I don't want to get too off topic, but you know, having a 50% or less snap count, you're really banking on you know, boom or bust. And when I showed you those scoring in the beginning, we're just looking for cheap tackles, big plays, sacks, you know, pass deflect. That's what we're looking for when we're when we're evaluating our talent for this. But yeah, Montez Sweat. And you see, I got Jonathan Allen down there at 14. I even got Chase Young at 16. I know we're only doing a top 15, but I'm starting all three. I'm starting those Ferraris up because if I'm wrong about one, two of those are probably going to get hot this game. Make sense? Yep. Okay. After Montez Sweat, we're going to number nine. We're going to Chris Jones, okay? All right. Chris Jones is an animal. Let's just say he speaks for himself, okay? Um, again, this is another reason why I like to pull stats by category, okay? For an interior defensive lineman, defensive, ta uh, defensive tackle, if you will, okay? Chris Jones has seven sacks on the season. That's number one defensive tackle. Now, what's interesting about that is he didn't play week one, did he? We all know he famously held out, right? So he's missing a game, and he has more sacks than not just the people at his position, but also some of, these, some of these names that we ranked ahead of him, okay? So very quality defensive tackle, interior guy. Um, what I want to say here, I want to focus on this. He's got a really sweet matchup this week when you look at this. Um, that's why I got him number nine. He's playing the Chargers, right? The Chargers, man, uh, regardless of how they put him in, Jamie, let's say they have him playing the three technique. The Chargers give up 28.60% fantasy points to the three technique. Let's say the Chiefs want to move him, move him around to the five technique. The Chargers give up. 30.10% uh 30.10 points fantasy points a game to five technique. So let me say it again. The Chargers give up a whopping 28.60 fantasy points per game to the three technique, but the five technique they give up 30.10%. Either way, wherever how they line him up, wherever how they scheme him, I'm starting him. If I have him, I'm starting him. The days of having nose tackle guard also that's out the window, especially when you're when, when you know schemes you're talking about three and five techniques. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, see, I'm, I'm new to this IDP thing a little bit. What is a three technique and what's a five technique? Oh, really? Um, yeah. Um, good question. Uh, hold on a second. I can actually – hold on. Let me, let me go – give me one second. Okay. Um, why, now, while you're pulling yeah. that up, I did notice that uh, the Chargers are, like, middle of the pack on their offensive line. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, their uh, hurry rates – Pretty much middle of the pack. Run blocking rates, not that great at all. Yeah, yeah either explain, way. Explain yep. this three technique and five technique. I don't understand that. Okay, so really easy. And let me know if you don't see this. Hold on a second. Um, I just pulled up. Uh, I got the score and pulled up. Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah, there we go. Okay, um, yeah, I'm just trying to get a feel for it. So so basically, it's just fancy talk of where you're putting a defensive tackle. When you look at this, and offensive linemen are on the top here, okay, so a center would be considered a zero, a zero technique, okay? The guards next to him, and this is just basic football, those are called two techniques, and the tackles are four. They're evens. So offense is even. Defense is odd. So you have a zero technique, a two technique, a four technique, okay? Now the defense combats that. If they have a nose guard over the zero technique, he'll usually be somewhere in here, right? Between the center and the guard or right on top of him. He'll usually play what's called a one technique. So in a three, four, you see a nose guard. He's playing the one technique, okay? We don't have that in this. Uh, I don't really care for one technique players because they get double teamed a whole lot. Neither here nor there. So when we're talking particularly about Chris Jones, if you look between the guard and the tackle, this is the, this is the space of a three technique. A three technician, which is a nose tackle, he'll usually play in here. 
I mean, he'll get he'll get double teamed now and again. But the spot that I really look for, and it all depends on the scheme. It really does. I'm looking for the five technique, which is between the tackle and the tight end. If I get a player, if I get a player on the five technique, I don't care what his position is. I don't care what his number is on the field. That's just as good as any defensive end out there. That's why you see, and that's why you got to know schemes because players, players that are in a five technique, like Grady Jackson, uh, he's, <laughs> he's, uh, he's just as good as a defensive end. Um, I just pulled a picture up to kind of show you. This is an excellent question. Um, I kind of went into this a little bit. Uh, okay, here we go. So can you see that little picture there? No, I'm only seeing the scoring still. Okay, hold on, buddy. There All right, how go. about now? Yep, perfect. Okay, so this is the offensive lineman. You got the quarterback on the centers on the zero technique. These guards are on a three. The tackles are on a five. Okay, when you look at Aaron Donald circled here, he is playing on this guy right here. He's playing the three technique here. Let's say that the team was to shift over and he's here. He's playing a five technique. Okay. Uh -huh. So three and five technique is what I like to look for on defensive tackles. If for some reason they shift and I got a nose tackle playing over here, he's got a free pass at the quarterback. They can't really double team unless they chip with the tight end or the running back. So for me, for me, I would all day long, I would, uh, I would prefer, I would prefer a, a defensive tackle playing that position. But in this case, really, the Chargers give it up for either player. I mean, so you're okay either way, no matter how Andy Reid, no matter how Andy Reid wants to scheme them. Yeah, that's very interesting, man. I've never looked at schemes like that, so I'm gonna have to look more into it. Love your breakdown on it. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, I've been playing football. Water. That's just a basic scheme. That's a basic uh, concept. I mean, the NFL does it a little bit more in depth. But if you look, we talked about number nine, Chris Jones. He's 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 a menace. And it's no coincidence underneath him, number 11 is Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald, um, kind of in a different different scenario this week. Um, Aaron Donald, he's um, not in the best matchup. It's not great, but he has three sacks on the season. That's tied for 11th. Um, you, you invest in the player, not the matchup. But he's going against the Steelers. The Steelers clean this up pretty well. For a defensive tackle, they actually rank uh, 16th at the position. The five technique, they're actually third. So they they clean this up pretty well. Um, so so you got two two high graded defensive tackles this week. One's in a really good matchup. The other one's in an average matchup. They're only separated by a couple a couple of measures. You see. Uh, um, what 11 and third, uh, uh, nine and 11. So, uh, <clears throat> this is just my deciding factors. I'm showing you guys what I use. Make sense? Yep. Perfect. Okay. And then I skipped over number 10, you know, Hassan Reddick. Um, I just want to be careful with this. I want to include Hassan Reddick. Don't get me wrong. He's been up and down this year. He's had two really good games. He has. Three, if you count the sack that he had in the Commanders game. So let's just let's just give him the benefit of the doubt. He's had three really good games. Okay, he's going up against the Dolphins this week. The Dolphins' offensive line is very highly regarded in PFF. I've had debates with people offline, different things. You know whether or not the Dolphins are really that good. But yeah, according to the metrics, they are not giving up very much. They're fourth against the pat their fourth best against the pass rush and even so if you watch games Tua does that quick release stuff he gets rid of the ball really quick off of slats slants and whatnot and then the other thing I want to consider and be mindful of here Tua's coming off all that concussion stuff last year so you know the team's going to be pretty pretty well invested on protecting him that's not the best news for Hassan Riddick I can see him having a good game but I don't see him necessarily being a menace I don't, I don't see him necessarily being, um, being a problem on the field. But he'll be. I got him top ten. Consider him in the top ten. Uh, nothing wrong with with Reddick. I just don't see. I don't see it as a great matchup. Um, moving on to this final tier category, um, I'm going to talk about these guys. And honestly, it's dealer's choice. You see, I'm high in the Commanders this week, so we'll skip Josh on 14, Chase Young at 16. Um, let's talk about Highsmith really quick. 
I got Alex Highsmith as the number 12. He's um he's got 11 tackles on a season that's tied for 20th. You know, he's got eight assists tied for fifth. He's got two sacks. That's good. Tied for the two forced fumbles tied for first. Uh, we talked about this with Watts with the Rams. They're about average middle of the pack. They're not great, but they can be beaten. So he's he's in consideration. If you have him, he's a starter. Why not? Why not play this guy? Um, honestly, Highsmith and, and, and Kayvon Thibodeau, 12 and 13. You can switch those guys around on preference who you like better. Uh, in fact, I debated it before we, we went on this podcast. But uh, Kayvon Thibodeau, he has a really good matchup this week. He's going against the commanders who just are horrible against the pass rush. They're they're number one against giving up the the plays, okay? They grade horrible. Um, Kayvon Thib- Thib- Thibodeau, he actually has been coming on a strong lately. He's got four sacks in the last five games. Commanders are the worst of the position. They rank number one in defensive ends. They're actually giving up 43 points, 43 fantasy points to the defensive end. Um, we mentioned it earlier. I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. Go ahead and just talk to uh, go ahead and talk to Sam Howell. He could probably mention it himself. Okay. Um, do you see anything um, unusual in my top 15, Jamie? Uh, no, everything looks good to me. Uh, the one thing I saw is uh, you have Tibbet Hole I do. a little bit higher than I the know. consensus. And, I mean, I can see why. Just what you just explained against Washington. Uh, Highsmith, uh, I mean, like you said, you could switch those guys. I know uh, Stafford will probably get the ball out quick. He's got two great receivers, so that can kind of hinder his points. Uh, but Interchangeable yeah, no. parts, yeah. Yeah, but no, I, I like it. I feel good about this. Now, all of my guys I'm pretty solid about. Now, my 15th ranked player is really high, and nobody has Ed Oliver this high, but I'm going to explain why, okay? Ed Oliver, who plays the three technique, mind you, okay? A lot of people don't know this, but Ed Oliver is leading his team in pressures, pass rushes, and QB hits on the season, okay? He's playing the Patriots. The Patriots are the sixth ranked uh, passing attempt, drop back passing, going back. They do that the sixth most out of any team in the NFL. So what does that tell you? He did, he's going to go back to pass. This guy has a chance to make havoc. Okay. And, and yeah, one he's more metric, ranked, but he's also not. The Patriots are not good at the passing ding, attack. Ding ding so, ding! Yes. You just you just earned a bowl of pierogies. Ding ding <laughs> ding! <laughs> Cheese or potato? You said everything's funner with cheese. Everything's better with cheese, man. Well, the Patriots, regardless of what bowl of pierogies they have, it's not fun. They are doing horrible at the offensive line. Uh, what were you saying about the offensive line? Ho- they're horrible, man. Like so the whole Patriots PFF, team. I was looking at this earlier today. PFF has them ranked the third worst offensive line, and yep. none of their linemen are in the green. None of them are in the green, except for one, excuse me. Only one's in the green. So you put that together, what I just said. Let's put it all together. And I tweeted this earlier, earlier, um, or actually yesterday night. So you got a really bad offensive line blocking for a team that wants to go back like it's 1970, go back and throw the, throw the deep pass. And then you got Ed Oliver just sitting there, hungry, ready to attack. If you if you you heard it here first, I got Ed Oliver in the top fifteen. That's either gonna make or break me in these rankings this week. I feel good about it. At least I can justify it. If I'm wrong, like we were, a lot of us were wrong on uh, Montez Sweat this week. Again, I'm not worried about it. I played the best I could. And IDP, that's all you can do is forecast for the future. Sometimes we hit, sometimes we don't. But I feel incredibly good about Ed Oliver. Any questions? Yeah, I mean, you can even move them up a little bit just playing the Patriots. I just noticed that they are the 30th ranked offense in the league right now behind the Steelers and Giants. Ain't that something? Yeah. Now, for the you paid subscribers out there, you guys that are on the IDP, you know how I do this. I like to show before I move on, this is my top 15. This is what we talked about. You know, I feel good about all these guys we just mentioned. Okay, the Crosby, the Watt, the Bosa, the Garrett, the Hunter, the Hutchinson, the Allen, the Sweat, the Jones, Reddick, 
Donald Smith, High Smith, sorry, Thibodeau, Allen, Oliver. Once we get down here, you want to talk about guys on the bubble, and and I'm showing you guys my whole rankings. Um, I'm okay, Chase Young, Buckner, right there. Uh, I, I'll take a shot with Benito again, Carl Granderson, Cooper. I mean, there's a bunch of guys on here. But what I did, guys, is I'm showing you guys, for you guys that need to go deeper like me, I'm showing you guys my top 50 at this position. Okay? Again, any given Sunday, I tinker with this every single week. But for you guys that are playing in deeper leagues, there it is. Enjoy it. Um, you're not wrong. You're not wrong by, by starting those guys. And again, my top 15, I'm more than okay taking all those guys all the way down to – say top 12 or 13, uh, I can start all of them as my tier one. I'm more than okay doing that. Um, I took a couple shots at the end there. And again, it could be either one. Um, if there's no questions on this, I'm going to move on to DBs. Okay. We're going to talk about DBs. But before I go on and talk about DBs, something really bothered me this week. All right. I want to make sure you share my screen. Six arm priest. And that's one heck of a name, six arm priest. I appreciate you by posting this. Okay. He said, regarding Julian Love, what happens when Jamal Adams starts tomorrow coming back from the concussion and last season injury? Love has played horrible once that happens. And you know what? Honestly, I had I had love pretty high, as a lot of people did. You know, I hate the cliche, I love love. However, at the time of the recording last week, I think we do these on Wednesday nights or Tuesdays, um, there wasn't any news on Jamal Adams. As soon as I seen that news and I knew he was fully healthy, I wanted to do a rebuttal instantly, okay? Um, in case you don't know, and, and, you know, the question on that, yeah, it's, 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 it's Adams' this field again. So right now... Julian Love doesn't really have any value for me. And it's the reason, it's the way I play as well. Um, I don't want players that are split in time. I want guys 90, 100%, um, as I'll explain. I don't want I don't want to deal with it. And uh, I know you're probably thinking too, six arm priest, you're probably like, well, you know, this has happened before. Well, not really, because weeks before with Jamal Adams, he was always teased he's going to play. Will he come back? Will he not? Will he, won't he? Um, now that we've seen it, now that we know he's healthy, it's definitely a dangerous situation to love. So I'm benching. I'm getting rid of love altogether. I'm, I'm, I'm using Jamal Adams. I got him in my top 15 this week. Um, and the reason I did, if you look at the numbers, Jamal Adams played 85% of the snap share. And he actually produced four tackles. Uh, and, and, you know, he had a, he had a forced fumble as well. When you put all that together, you got a player coming off the injury. He's healthy. He's getting all the snaps again. He's making all the plays. There's just no room anymore. There's just no room anymore for, uh, for Julian Love. Thank you for leaving that question for me. Um, thank you for spotting that. And like I said, it was totally a product of, we start these podcasts early in the week. So we can have Thursday night football game. That news didn't come out until afterwards. So, again, um, thanks for tuning in, and hopefully that answers your question moving forward. Uh, let's go into the DBs. Sorry about that, guys. Let's go right into the DBs, okay? Uh, Jamie, anything stick out to you with this rankings? Uh, let me see here. What do you got? Okay, so, while Jamie's doing uh, yeah, that, I'm, looking at Curl. I'm not a fan of it. Huh? Yeah, no, I see you have Curl, number two, over the guy that's going against Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Can, can you explain um, that? <laughs> yeah, I can. I can. So so let me put a disclosure. I hate DB rankings. I really do. I really, really do. This is the most volatile of all the positions. This is so hit or miss. Um, again, we got a lot of name players in here. Um, DB. So hit or miss, so volatile, as I just said, okay? Mm -hmm. Not only is it hard to forecast these guys week to week, not only is it, but they're interchangeable. You see one goes down, another one comes in. Uh, DBs are the most turnover and the most random of any position to rank, okay? 
Uh, to me, there's only one legit guy and always will be Derwin James. So that's why I have him as the top player regardless. He's number one in my eyes. Almost matchup proof at this point. If he's not injured, you play him. It's as simple as that. Now, granted, Holland and even Curl are making a case for that, but it's Derwin James above everyone else. Um, even a guy like Petrie, he's like 20% less snaps than James. James, on a per-snap basis, beats any DB out there. He's got a full-time job and has the ability to finish top 10 any given week because it's most likely uh, – this is most likely opponent based, give or take each week. But if you got players on the field that are logging heavy snap counts, that's why we do this. That's why we rank them. And that's also another reason why we wait till the end of drafts, most of us do. And that's when we start picking up defensive backs because it's such a shaky position. I can go so deep, so deep in leagues at defensive back. Like I said, usually these top players I'm talking about, I don't ever have an opportunity because I'm so used to scooping up defensive linemen. In linebackers first, but that's why we target players. We target players off this list. We're always targeting players off these lists, and we keep players with very high snap counts. So to answer uh, to answer uh, you know the audience's question before, everybody on my list that I have here to talk about, they're all logging ninety percent at least or more of their snaps, or they're not on my list. They're way at the bottom. I'll let somebody else try to gamble at a big play. It won't be me. It won't be me. Uh, so let me hit these up for you. Number one is Derwin James. Head and shoulders above everybody else. I just beat a dead horse on that, did I not? Number two, Cameron Curl. He's got 41 solos on the year. He is second. PFF loves this guy always. He's almost a little miniature linebacker. You've seen what... Well, we haven't got the linebackers yet, but he's right there in comparison with a linebacker, okay? He's also only really had 18 receptions all year thrown on him. Only 18 receptions thrown on him. So last week, I kind of broke it down to the audience, Jamie. The metrics that I use here when I'm looking at safeties, I'm looking at high percentage snap count, which is all these guys. I'm looking at tackle rates because of that scoring – we can game that scoring system on the way it is. You see, I get more value with the tackle, but, and I can gauge a tackle. So I'm looking at high tackle safeties that play a lot. The other metrics, I have four metrics as Jamie. I look at high snap count. I look at tackles. I look at the volume. I also look at the third, the third metrics I look at. I look at how often they're thrown on. If they're thrown on often, even if they're not a good player, they're still going to generate tackles. That's just the way IDP is. Okay. Break up the last two. metrics. Yep. Mm -hmm, the last metrics. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through my list and I'm gonna explain what that is in a second. Okay. So let's do it. We got Derwin James number one. We got Cameron Curl number two. You know Javon Holland number three. He's playing lights out this year because it's the scheme. They got him deployed all over the place. That's not gonna change against the Eagles. Okay. He's got 37 tackles on the season. That ranks him third at his position. That's why we rank him by position, right? He's also got nine targets on the year. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. He's got 21 targets in the year, so that ranks him ninth, okay? Um, after him, of course, you got Antoine Winfield, 23 tackles on the year. That's 31. And he's only given up seven. He's only allowed seven catches. That ties him 41st. The thing about Antoine Winfield, he's a free safety that plays like a strong safety. Um any given week, any one of those guys can be your top players. Uh, I wouldn't lose too much sleep over it. If you got one, you start one, okay? Moving down to number five, we got Kyle Hamilton. Um, I kind of toyed with this. I wasn't sure if I was going to put Bynum here or Hamilton. Um, and they're two polar opposite players. You know, Hamilton goes off one game, and then another game he's off, and he's cold, and he's hot. But you got you to gotta invest in the talent. You got to invest in the talent with, with Hamilton. Um, pulling up Hamilton's stats. Um, last week, oh, let me just do that while we're, while we're going. When you look at Kyle Hamilton's stats last week, okay? So, eh, see, last week's not really a good choice. So he's 100% week three, nine tackles. 100% week two. Or I'm sorry, week four, five tackles. 100% week five, three tackles. 
Last week, he only logged 58%. So he's just like Snap, uh, Montez Sweat the other day that we were talking about earlier. Montez Sweat only got 58% of the snaps. He got 58% of the snaps. What are you going to do with that? I'll tell you what you're going to do with that, Jamie. He only got one tackle last week. Consider that an anomaly that normally doesn't happen. Kyle Hamilton's a great start this week against the Lions because we know the Lions, right? The Lions are going to throw that ball all over the field, okay? So I consider him employed, okay? So my player here, my player here at um, my player here at number five is a guy who has the potential and maybe hasn't really showed it or in, in spots has showed it. This next guy, no one's seen coming, no one knew the potential, and he got in the field and he has just been blowing up. Uh, Jamie Cameron Bynum is sensational. Let me tell you about this guy. And you have to truly pull the stats, pull it by position to see how he is truly worth. Cameron Bynum has 45 tackles on the season. That is first among all defensive backs, okay? He's also been targeted 32 times. That is ranked first at his position. So what do we have? We have a guy getting targeted and a guy making them tackles, right? So he checks both my boxes, right? Let's look at the third metrics. I haven't showed you the fourth one yet. Third metrics, receptions allowed, just 28. He's also ranked first in that one. So if you were to look at a safety in my book, Cameron Bynum, first in tackles, first in targets, first in catches allowed, I am tempted to bring him all the way up. I am tempted, but I just can't bet against Holland, Curl, Winfield, Hamilton. It's a hard, it's a hard room. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave Bynum right at six for the time being. I'm gonna leave him there. I'm gonna see what happens. Okay. Any questions on those? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I see. I can see you flip flopping Bynum and Hamilton just because of the matchup. Because uh, Brock Purdy hasn't been looking that great. Uh, Detroit. I mean, you're banking on Amar Rice St. Brown. You know, he's gonna beat the defense. He's gonna run right in. Hamilton, he's gonna get those tackles. So yeah. I can see I can see why you have them there. I, I I like both rankings, but I could also see them being flip flopped. I mean, I could really argue it anyway for those top six, really. But those are the three big matrices that I use. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not gonna beat a dead horse on that because we already know these are your best players, regardless of who you're talking to. Okay. Um. So these next ones are a bit controversial. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the IDP guys share snap tool calculator. Okay. You can see my screen, right, Jamie? Yes, sir. Okay, so read Blankenship. Not a lot of people know who this guy is. I mean, as hardcore guys do. Yeah, but I've never read, heard of him. <laughs> read, oh, really? Okay, so read Blankenship. He's been targeted 23 times on the season. He's ranked seventh at doing so. But what I want to look at for these bottom guys here is their snap percentage. When you look at Reed Blankenship, okay, he didn't play week two. Can't hold that against him, right? Look at the last three games. 100% 47 snaps. 100% 78. Week five, 100%, whatever. Now, last week, you know, you got to give these guys a break once in a while. But, yeah, he's been in there killing it every single week. And you know what happens when you find players that are getting 100% almost every single week? You end up getting stats, right? Let's break it down, okay? Week three, 100% seven tackles. Week four, 100% eight tackles. Week five, 100% seven tackles. Last week they cut him, and, of course, his numbers are going to go down. But he's still netted. He still netted five tackles. Um, overall, great players, any single one of those guys. My fourth and final category, and this is an advanced metrics. That's why I highly recommend the IDP guy snap tool calculator. I highly recommend, I highly recommend PFF using their tools as well. Um, you see this number eight guy, Julian Blackman. He excels at being a box safety, kind of like Grant Delpit. Okay. This guy gets 80% of his snaps on the field. In that box role, which is almost like another linebacker, 
Julian Blackman's not necessarily like the greatest athlete, but because of that scheme, he benefits each week in the top 10. Very sneaky pick. Um, I think it's criminal that I have Mika Fitzpatrick down this low. And again, throughout the week, I kind of tweak my rankings a bit. 34 tackles on the air. He's ranked fifth, 19th, uh, giving up 13 receptions allowed. At 13 receptions allowed, he's, he's 19th. So fifth in tackles, 19th in uh, in uh, receptions allowed. He's playing the Rams. It's a it's a mistake prone team. He can probably benefit. I just don't see a path for him getting ahead of buying him Blankenship. I could be wrong, but I got I got Mika in the in the top ten at least. Same thing with Old Man Harrison. Um, this bottom tier, it's really any guy here. I got Hufunga number eleven. Jesse Bates, 12. Jamal Adams with his amazing 85% snap share all of a sudden. Generated four tackles and uh, forced fumble. Okay. All right. Um, Grant Delpit. I mean, you know about Grant Delpit. You know about that team scheme, how the players fit around that. He's another box safety with those sweet stats. And we got Justin Simmons. Um, The guys on the bubble for me, are Jenkins, Rudy Ford, McKinney, Kayvon Wallace. Any one of those guys can crack a top 15. Any single one of those guys can. Um, What I'm doing, as always, guys, is I'm showing you my DB rankings. Um, I'm showing you my top 50 for the time being. And, again, as we get closer to kickoff, I'll probably move a couple players around. But my top 15 are Derwin James, Cameron Curl, Holland, Antoine Winfield, Kyle Hamilton, Cameron Bynum, Reed Blankenship, Julian Blackman, Mika Fitzpatrick, Harrison Smith, Funga, Bates, Adams, Delpit, Simmons. And then, of course, you got Jenkins, Ford, McKinney, Wallace on the bubble. But any one of these guys is a pretty good player. Any one of these guys, at least the higher ones, have a high snap count percentage. So I'm looking at that, and I'm looking at insane tackles because of this scoring format. And I'm also looking at box safety points as as well as catches allowed. Um. That completes my defensive back portion. Um, any questions on any of that? Uh, no, I mean, pretty straightforward. I, I like the blanket ship ranking it's going against Miami. Uh, they're going to throw the ball a lot, so I can see a lot of tackles, maybe some interceptions, breakup passes. I, I, I like it. And then uh, the Dow Pit, man, I can see I, you have them probably a little bit lower than normally, right? Yeah, I, I kind of like Delpit as a player. Um, the way that defense works under Schwartz, they have a, like a wide nine. They rotate all their defensive linemen out except for Miles Garrett. He's kind of like, you know, he's a he's a freak of nature. What they'll do is they'll bring down one of the safeties. Juan uh, Thornhill, he's more of a coverage guy, so it's, it's Delpit. And Delpit proved last year he had 100 tackles on the season above that. So it's usually Delpit who gets that sweet spot safety role. Um, and that's what I kind of look for because again, the scoring format I'm in, that's, it benefits the tackle. If I was in a different kind of format, these guys may be moved around. Um, yeah, last week on the podcast, I mentioned Trey Henderson as defensive lineman. Yeah. If I'm in a sack heavy league, he goes forward, but I'm not, I'm in a tackle heavy league. So he goes back. So usually Hubbard gets all the attention, that sort of thing. You just got to know your scoring format. Yeah. Like the one thing I noticed Minshew doesn't like to throw deep a lot. So that'll probably take Del Pitt away a little bit more. Yep. Um, so I'm going to move on to the linebackers, okay? So with the linebackers, if you look at my screen, I have one guy head and shoulders above everyone else. And depending who you talk to, this is a bit debated because, you know, people like Fosse Holocoon, people like Roquan Smith, people like Franklin. Those guys are usually in your top three. To me, it's not even close. Let me let me just show you this, okay? Zare Franklin has 62 tackles on the season. At his position, he's ranked number one. Olakun only has 49. 62 49, give me the guy with the most tackles any day of the week. High snap count. Not only that, does he have a high snap count? He checks that box. He has 62 tackles ranked first, right? He's got a really sweet matchup this week. He's going against the team. I got to watch what I say here, but he's going against the team. The Cleveland Browns, mind you, try and make sure Jamie doesn't go off here. It gives up the fourth best points to the linebacker. Um, 
It's not even close this week for me. It's going to be Franklin. And in the next category, I kind of got Olakun second and Edwards three. And this is a bit controversial too. Those players are kind of interchangeable right now, as crazy as that sounds. Let, let's pull the stats. When you look at it by position, it kind of makes sense. Olakun and Edmonds, they both got 49 tackles on a season. That's tied for second amongst each other. Okay. Olakun has 17 assists on the year. Ed Edwards has 16. So oddly enough, this is where kind of rankings get kind of funny. Olakun with 17 assists, he's tied for ninth. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 17 is tied for ninth. And then TJ Edwards with 16 is tied for 12th. So one solo assist bumps him down three, three spots. So I, I say this to bring up a point. Guys, don't get stuck on rankings. It's too early in the season. It's really one solo tackle difference. Don't get stuck on that. It's a preference. It's a preference when you're splitting hairs between apples and oranges, really. But uh, Ola Kuhn's fine. Edwards is fine. You know who else is fine? Roquan Smith. Yeah. Roquan's a little bit behind those guys with 42 tackles, okay? They got 49. They're tied for second. Ola Kuhn's got 42 tackles. He's, he's ranked seventh. Again, how funny is that? It's a difference of seven tackles, okay? <laughs> that's 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 a little bit more than one per game difference, and he's ranked that much lower. Don't get twisted on the um, on the stats. What's amazing with Roquan Smith is, yeah, he's got forty two tackles in the season. He's also got twenty one assists. He's tied for second. Um, it's a context matters, Jamie. Context matters when you're looking at these players. Uh, when you are looking at the differences in um, – when you are looking at uh, – can you see my screen? Yeah, the points. When, yep. when you're looking at a guy who can produce solo tackles and he's making all these big plays and he's producing 1.5 a, a, a clip and the other guy's just a solo sack artist, he's getting half of that, right? So you got to kind of look at where your tackles come from. And I said this last week, when you're a solo tackle guy, you make the big play, they're up, they're down, cool. When you're a assist tackle guy, Matt Milano is a good example of that. Ernest Jones is another one. Yeah, they help the team out. They might need help making the play. They're in it, okay? The, th the reason I bring this up is because Roquan Smith is both of those things. He's a team player, and he gets his own stats. So any given week, this guy can produce just as good as the top four do. Uh, there's nothing wrong with him at all. Um, go ahead and start either one of those. But that's the way I got it. Franklin, Olakun, Edmonds, Smith, I feel good about that. How about how about you, Jamie? Uh, yeah, I mean, for Franklin and Olakun, you could pretty much put in the same tier. I, I like that. But uh, I like how you have them separated. Edwards going against Vegas, one of the worst offensive lines. They're just, he's just going to eat all day. Yeah. Um, now, now these next two, I'm going to kind of put them in their own tier a little bit. I got Bobby Wagner. Uh, I'm sorry. I got Fred Warner fifth, Bobby Wagner sixth. You can really go either or, and I would not be offended one bit. Let me explain the process here. Okay. For, for Warner, he's got 41 tackles on a season. Okay. Um, Tied for 32nd. He's got 25 tackle for a loss. Okay. You got a really good player there going against, uh, you know, go, going against a, a, a decent enough matchup, right? Uh, playing Arizona. They like to the run. They don't have anybody there. I'm sorry. That, that's that's Wagner. Warner's going against Minnesota. They like to the run too. They ain't got nobody there. So so you got Warner, right? But also let's look at Wagner in the same time, time space here. Okay. Wagner He's got 34, uh, 34 tackles on the season, okay? He's got 10 assists. That's ranked for 32nd. He's got he's tied for first in interceptions, and he's going against the 49ers that give up the 18th best pass rush. So to put it all together, you got one player who does really, really well, and he's going against the 25th, 25th best uh, linebackers. You got another one who's going against Wagner. You got going against the 18th best uh, in the 49ers. Both are pretty relative. It's just that Warner has more, more tackles this on the season than Wagner does, but Wagner has the better matchup. So either one's interchangeable to me. 
any one of these guys is generating high snaps, any one of these guys can pop. So when I look at this ranking, my top four is good to go. Those two there can be flipped around. Um, when I get to seven, I get a little bit, a little bit uh, sassy though. You see who my number seven is? You got uh, yep, Quay Walker, man. He's on my okay. uh, my zombie team. Oh yeah, the zombie league. Um, if you guys get bored, hold on. Matters of fact, let me go ahead and plug you. Um, on the Going for Two podcast, if you guys get bored, go ahead and Google Zombie League. Um, Jeff, Jamie, they they get pretty pretty crazy with each other on there. Um, let me see if I could find it. Yeah, we, we um, love to talk crap to each other. <laughs> so if you guys see my screen, if you go on to goingfor2.com, the Zombie League, this is a uh, unique league in itself. These guys go on, and it's kind of like a vampire. If you uh, if you're the zombie that given week, if you're the zombie that given week, you go ahead and take you contaminate the other guy, and you take the players. Yeah, if you beat them, um, you steal a player, and then they have to drop their whole starting lineup, but they can protect one guy, and that's it. But when that's they it. protect one guy, they have to drop the same position from their bench. So say if you want to protect your quarterback, but mm -hmm. you don't have a quarterback on your bench, you can't protect them. Yeah, and then Jordan Reigns put a little bit of a, of a comment on here for the IDP scoring, and then Geoff made it a super flex last year. It was a feeding frenzy. Oh, yeah. um, it was real. <laughs> it was a really fun, fun league to get into. Uh, if anybody has interest in zombie league and how we play, uh, I like I show up for the unique leagues. So uh, yeah, just feel free. Leave me a message in the in the in the in the um, in the comments, and and I'll show you how they 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 start. But yeah, it's all online. We we're the first ever one. It was a bunch of us analysts, right? Yep. Yeah, my IDP game is pretty strong, so that's keeping me in it. But you know, two years in a row, you made me a zombie, right? No, I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. Last year, uh, you got me by a point, and then this year, you got me again. So awesome. <laughs> Yeah, um, no, I, uh, I lost to Jeff last year, week one, when he was a zombie. So I was a mm -hmm. zombie all year long. This year, I made it to week two without becoming a zombie. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> it's a fun, fun league. Jamie plays in a lot of fun leagues. Uh, you play in Scott Fishbowl too as well, right? Uh, Fishbowl, yeah, that's another good one. Love it. Yeah, you're always in the chats and you're always so so fun. That's why I wanted you to be on, on the podcast with me. Um, yeah, like last year, at this time last year, I just saw it on my Facebook feed. I was in the top 150 players out of the 3,300 that are involved. This year, I'm bottom 100. Gotcha. So not doing too good. <laughs> hey, so I got a sleeper here at seven, Quay Walker, like we, like we were talking about. Quay Walker hurt his knee uh, before the bye week. So, you know, there's not a lot of information right now on him. Besides, the team is hoping he plays, okay? Let me just show you a couple stats here. I like to use guys. Uh, oh, I'm not seeing any see stats on there. Oh, hold on a minute. Can you see my screen or no? Uh, nope. Okay, hold on a second. Um, I like to use fantasy data to give me some quick stats. Um, let me see. So let me share my screen. All right, here you go. So let me just show you this, okay? Quay Walker before the buys, before he hurt his injuries. A lot of people don't know this. Week one, solo three. Okay, well, week two, Atlanta. On the screen. What's that? Still not seeing your stats on the screen. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, yeah, this is fantasy dad. I had to click it over. Sorry. So if you look at week one, you know, okay. Week two, he had eight solos and nine assists. So he had 17 in week two. Week three, he had seven. Week four, he had 19. Week five, he had four. So the reason I bring this up, Quay Walker is the only player this year to have 17 tackles and not one but two games. Wow. That is sick. Wow. Right? Insane, yeah. If he's able to go, he's the play of the week. <laughs> he really is. Uh, being at linebacker, most play stats, they don't they don't put him up like that, okay? Start Walker. He's the only linebacker to ever do that. Uh He's a true hit or miss. You're gonna have to keep an eye on the on the on the on the not the way on the injury report for him. Okay. 
Okay, next thing, same thing with Nick Bolton. I put him at eight. I feel like Nick Bolton should be a lot better fully recovered now. I really do. He's coming back after a full game. He should be ready to, to force havoc. But both those guys there, they're a little lower than most people would uh, would put them. It's because I really don't know how injuries are going to go. So I got Walker 7, Bolton 8. Yeah, I, yeah, I can see them being right around that area. I'm pretty sure I have both of them on my zombie team. So I got it now. I got the next one. And we can just shoot these guys all in order. I got Bernard 9. I got Okri 10. I got White 11. And I feel like I'm cheating you guys by doing Watt again at 12. But it's such a good matchup. I mean, obviously the value for him is on defensive line. But the value for him is at linebacker, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, at defensive line, but he can be played at linebacker too. Ernest Jones, 13. Brooks, 14. Dre Green, Greenlaw at 15. Okay. Um, the reason I have it like this, uh, Ernest – I'm going backwards here. Ernest Jones, he gets a lot of solos. Um, he's tied for sixth with, with solos. I mean, okay, 45 solo tackles, but um, that's fourth in the league, but he gets a lot of, a lot of assists as well. Um, but anyway – all of these guys here generate a pretty good performance, okay? Um, Bernard is the last man standing. He's the last guy standing in the whole entire Bills running back room. Um, they don't trust Dotson. You guys seen that. They don't trust him. And not only do they not trust him, you got uh, Dorian Williams. Keep an eye on him because he's starting to generate some, uh, some play, okay? But uh, when you pull up Terrell... Hold on a second. Let me let me. Uh, when you pull up Terrell Bernard, when you pull up Terrell Bernard, it's like musical chairs in that Bills in that Bills room. He's got thirty five tackles on the year. That's sixteenth. That's good. That's a good player for most leagues that we play in, right, Jamie? Um, the guy has uh, quite a few. He's got two interceptions. That's tied for first. He's got 22 assists. Um, I can see this game. I can see this game, them wanting to run the ball a whole heck of a lot, the Patriots. Uh, they better run the ball a whole heck of a lot. They better run it towards Bernard. Because if they don't, they go back to pass. Like I predicted, Ed Oliver's going to have himself a feast. So that's why I got Bernard slightly ahead. But Bobby Oak, how do we say that? Oak Okarik. Okarik. I got to learn how to pronounce it. Okarik. <laughs> But yeah, he um he had himself a game last week and he he tends to do himself pretty well. But uh he's coming on. 39 tackles, it's 10th. Um 15th in solos, that's ranked 15th. Um he's one, which is ranked sixth, and he's got two forced fumbles. Um he's got himself a matchup against the against the commanders. Um obviously that team is gonna be very sack prone, very turnover prone. He's in a position to exceed. So Bernard, Bobby, Bobby O, Ernest Jones, and then I got slightly under that. You got to have a list with Kaiser White. Last week I didn't because I wasn't that favorable in the matchup. I think he hit my, my top 16. But this week I really enjoy some Kaiser White. Uh, let me show you at Fancy Data what I'm actually talking about. A lot of people don't know Kaiser White. At least at the beginning of the year, they didn't. Uh, let me explain. Kaiser White came over from the Eagles. We knew earlier this year that Zach Collins was going to play defensive line, linebacker to Cardinals. Then we also knew that Isaiah Simmons at the time for traded. He was going to play defensive back, the linebacker of the Cardinals. There was nobody there to generate these plays except for Kaiser White. Kaiser White comes over from the Eagles with the new defensive coordinator, uh, who's now the coach, Gannon. And boy, do they love themselves some Kaiser White. So let's look at some season stats here, okay? Uh, week one, five tackles, four assists, a tackle for a loss. Good for him. Uh, week two, Giants game, five tackles, uh, two assists. Okay, good for him there too, okay? So you see his pattern, right? Week three, a little bit higher, eight tackles, six assists. Week four against the Niners, three and four. Week five against the Bengals, six and four. Week six against the Rams, five and three. This guy is heavily engaged 
every single week. Very consistent. Um, well, he's consistent. Yeah. And that's what the bottom of my list is. Between Ernest Jones, Greenlaw, heck, TJ Watt. Uh, I almost put Jordan Hicks in there. Jordan Hicks is spotty to me. He's got Ivan Pace looking over his shoulder. I put him 16. So, so okay, to put it all together for you guys, the linebackers I have this week are – and I don't see this changing too much this week. It, it, I, I pretty, feel pretty good about Franklin, number one, Olakum two, TJ Edwards, three, Roquan Smith, four, Bobby Wagner, five, Fred Warner, six, Quay Walker, seven, Nick Bolton, eight, Bernard, nine, Bobby O, 10, Kaiser White, 11, TJ Watt, we'll put him at 12, Ernest Jones, 13. I put Brooks, 14. He doesn't really fit my model, but he's a freak of nature, as you can tell by all these ACL tears and all this other stuff. He just makes plays. And then Greenlaw, 15. I think it's a nice list. I feel like I cheated you guys because I put uh, TJ Watt in there. So I just got a couple alternates. Any given Sunday, I can see Hicks going off. I can see Alex Singleton going off. I'm a little concerned with Alex Singleton because he, he, you know, he has that two-down role a lot of times. Even though he's outplaying Jewel, I don't really trust him per se to put him in my top 15, but he's playing lights out. So power to him. Patrick Queen, any given Sunday, right? Devin White, Cody Barton, Robert Spillay. Hey, David Long, that's a sneaky play, top 25. If you see what he's been putting up, keep an eye on the way the Dolphins play defense, though. Um, Phillips has been out. I don't think he's going to be, I think he's going to play this week. When Phillips was out, Van Ginkle went from linebacker to defensive lineman. When he did that, Long got to play linebacker and he produced. Um, another sneaky play, Levante David. And uh, what I'm going to do, guys, as I always do, is I'm going to show you the rest of the list here. This is what I have right now at the moment. Like I said, I'm going to tinker with this all week, but I got a little bit more than 50-plus players. Uh, you welcome yourself. This is what I, I am thinking this week. This is how I think it's going to play out. Um, but overall, that's my linebackers. Uh, Jamie, any any um, any uh, questions? Yeah, the, the one guy you mentioned just now is uh, Lamonte David going against Atlanta. Hmm? He was one of the guys that I was drafting late in my best ball defensive leagues. Uh, hmm. Another guy you just mentioned, Spillane, going against Chicago, which I could see a big game from him. Sneaky game. Uh, Do you see his uh, – Snap percentage? What, what What is his snap percentage? Is that? For who? Uh, Spillane. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can do that. Hold on a second. Um, I uh, Any chance I get to go over to this? Uh, oh, hold on a second, buddy. Um, so let's go ahead and present. Let's go ahead and share my screen. Um, IDP snap count tool. All right. Okay. For the paid subscribers, you guys are in for a treat when you look at these snap counts. Let's go ahead and look at the Raiders. You were asking about Spillane? Spillane. I know it's uh, week five. He got, had a pretty good, decent fantasy week for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're not wrong. Look at this. 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. He hits all the criteria. All the criteria. And look at not just snaps, but you said it earlier, heavy volume, 64, 78, 62, 65, 58, 60. I mean, that's your guy right there. That is your guy. Um, I don't know if you guys seen it. Did you see the screen? Yeah, I see it now. Okay. Yeah, I was just making sure. So, so yeah, 64, 78, 62, 65. Yeah, that's a good, that's wow. a good solid week. I like uh, put him in there. Uh, and the Raiders are playing who again? Uh, aren't they playing – Chicago, I want to say. Yeah, they are. Yeah, so yep. there you go. Although, I mean, that's a backup quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I know they have one of the best running backs in the league, Roshan Johnson. You guys don't know yet, but you'll get to know him very, very well. <laughs> Love me some yeah. Roshan. <laughs> um, you know what? I think that completes the podcast, so we'll, we'll head out a little early tonight. Um, if you guys like this podcast, consider – consider subscribing consider hitting that like uh feel free to leave me questions throughout the week feel free to message me or jamie jamie what's your twitter handle what's the best way to get uh, a hold of you 
I'm on uh, Twitter, Jamie Perot. You can always message me there. If you can't get a hold of me there, uh, I'm also on Facebook. I'm always on Facebook, man. Just the same name. Find me. Brown's logo. You'll see me. Can't miss me. But you yeah, I'll, I'll me. answer any questions anybody asks. Yeah, same here. You can find me at IDP Hunter on Twitter. Uh, it's kind of play on words with my last name. Um, I missed a couple of people last week because I was in the middle of recording and, and doing some other stuff. But feel free to message me. Feel free to message the IDP pod. And on that note, too, you guys, if you consider signing up at IDP.org, uh, we got awesome tools and I'm just getting ready to show you guys throughout these episodes. Um, next week, we got the fantasy football doctor on and he's going to go over injuries. That's going to be an exciting show. He's a great I'm going to have my notebook ready. You know. Tune in. You mm -hmm. have to tune into that show. It's going to be amazing. But if you go to IDPguys.org, you can save 10% by using the code IDP plus pod. Okay, you'll get that 10% off. Um, thank you for watching uh, this IDP guys uh, video. Uh, if you like this content and you want more, uh, please hit the like. Um, it was a pleasure doing this podcast with you, Jamie. Um, we didn't say this earlier. Jamie actually got me involved in being an analyst and being a podcaster. It's just so cool because, you know, about a year ago, I was just a regular dude. And he's like, dude, you got a talent or you, you got stuff to say. And it's so cool that you guys out there want to hear this stuff and judging by the views last week we got an audience so if you guys keep watching you guys keep hitting the views tell your family tell your cousins we'll keep producing this kind of content if you like what we're putting out okay yeah, i need um, more of it myself you need more of it yourself nope. and and also check out jamie jamie every sunday does the sit start show and going for tube mm -hmm. um he also does the uh cheat sheet yep, uh, nice, for the going uh, for tube podcast Yep. So check us both out. We are usually freaking frack. I, I'm on his show. He's on my show. Uh, Jamie, would you consider coming back? I would love to come back, man. Okay, yeah. we'll come back. You'll have cheese pierogies, all per, uh, potato pierogies. Yeah, we'll have to do a debate that. <laughs> I was kind of hoping to see uh, get a debate of these Browns players, but look like we've seen eye to eye in a lot of this stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. I think I mean it's basic Browns. I mean defense is awesome. Can't deny it. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna head out here. Um, any questions? Hit me off up offline. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Um, see you next week. Thank you for watching this IDP guys video. If you like this content and you want more fantasy football content, click here. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos to help you master your IDP league, click here to subscribe.